Heather Ashford is a school catering manager in Birmingham. She's close to competing in NVQ Level 2 in practical cookery that's been specially adapted for school caterers. Obviously these are sweet scones but if they were savoury scones you wouldn't add your sugar. What would you be adding then to make... Cheese. Yeah, you would add some cheese. Again, what sort of cheese could you add so that it doesn't contain too much fat? A low fat option. Lovely, a low fat option. In deprived areas of Birmingham like King's Norton, good school meals can make a real difference to children's diets. In the middle of three housing estates sits Primrose Hill Primary School, where Heather works. In recent years, the school's made great efforts to improve both school meals and people's attitudes to healthy eating. These changes have earned Primrose Hill a Soil Association Award for its whole school approach to improving pupils' diets. In the school kitchen, this has involved the support of general assistants, dinner supervisors and, of course, catering manager Heather. You see the children eat a dinner and you think they're going home with a nice meal in the side in this afternoon. You know, it's, it's nice, nice to think that they're going home full. People, they're willing to go with the idea because we've got quite a responsibility when you think about it. We're feeding the next generation of adults. It's getting them to try things, that's the thing, isn't it? You eat with your eyes as well and if you can make it look nice and they let try it, then you can usually get them to eat it. When I first came, um, there was a lot of packet stuff. And since then, we've just tried to progressively use more and more fresh food. The new Eat Better, Do Better school food standards have implications for how school caterers are trained. With the onset of the new guidelines, it was felt um, just a wee bit inappropriate that we send uh, the ladies, the heads of kitchen away to learn how to cook with cream and butter sauces. And then when they get back to the kitchen, we say, well, hey, that's fine, but you can't quite do that here, you know, you can't use the butter, you can't use the cream, although we're not banning things, but, you know, we were then saying, well, you've learnt that, but we want you to relearn this. So we decided to meet with the three colleges and say, you know, we're very, we're very happy with the MVQ2 um, course in practical skills, but is there any way we could feed in our needs with the new healthy eating regime? So our ladies are going to college, they're following the syllabus of the MVQ2, however they're using our recipes. Heather's completing the specially adapted NVQ Level 2 in Practical Cookery on a day release course at her local college. Today, tutor Marilyn Rawlins is showing her how to make fruit scones. <laughs> right, so once we, we've sifted the flour and as we say to incorporate air into it, you're going to have, add some um, block margarine then. As you rub in, what is that going to do for your texture of your scones? We're putting air into the flour again because you're lifting it up and aerating it. We're going to add some sugar to this recipe, but what can we do so that it's a more healthier option for your children? We'll listen on the sugar and put, perhaps put a bit more fruit in to That's make it a bit more sweeter. So I'm going to add some sultanas to my mixture, around about 50 grams. Just sprinkle it in. So now you're going to slowly incorporate your milk to your scone mixture and you need about 100 ml of milk for this. What sort of milk can we use that will reduce the amount of fat for your children? Semi-skimmed. Yeah, we can use semi-skimmed. Instead of whole milk use, or skimmed. Yeah, or skimmed milk. OK, so that's drawn together now into a nice dough. Again, if you just like to... With Marilyn's dough finished, it's Heather's turn. What's it like for her, training on day release? A typical day at college would be we'd come in at nine o'clock in the morning and we usually cook till around lunchtime and then we will do um, th uh, theory in the other room um, to see we have understood what we've been told. I've been coming once or twice every month to the college here at Bourneville and hopefully within the next month I will have passed my MVQ to. Marilyn comes back to check on Heather. It's time to cut the dough. So now you use a cutter for sweet scones. We use the serrated edge cutter. And for plain scones, we use the one that hasn't any pattern on the edge at all. And now they're going to go into the oven. And they need to be on a 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you'd like to take those over for me. 
If we check one <coughs> at around about 15 minutes, you take it out. So how do you know when they're cooked? What will they look like? They should be golden brown on the top. Yes. Um, firm to the touch, but soft and moist in the middle. I think sometimes, um, because school meals does have a bad press and it isn't seen always as a particularly important part of the catering industry, that a lot of the uh, employees have very low esteem um, and they don't feel that they have the ability to be able to cook from scratch in the practical environment. What we do find is when they do come, that they do come with a variety of skills that they already have. And really what we're trying to do is enhance those skills so that they can go and put them back into practice in the workplace. Following the practical session, Marilyn has a tutorial with Heather, today, assessing her work so far. Today. Um, is there anything that you would have done any differently when you've done your scones? No, I don't think so, to be honest. Um, they were made just how I normally make them at school. The only thing that we've got that's outstanding now is your final test for your bread and dough. I know you've got an event coming up at school. Can you give me some bits and bobs information about that and what you're well, hoping to do? Once a term we have all the parents in for a meal. We're hoping to put on roast turkey, um, roast potatoes, cream potatoes, Fresh carrots, right. fresh car cabbage, lovely, and I think it might be sweet corn. Right, and have you thought about any desserts that you're going to use on that day? Banana bread because it covers quite a lot of the fruit. Yeah. It's one way the children enjoying fruit without them even realising they're having that it. They're having the fruit, that's yeah. lovely, that's a really good plan. It's the following week. Back at school, Heather's preparing for Parents' Day. Uh, today it's Mother and Sunday lunch. We're trying to make it a nice atmosphere. We have music on. Um, they lay the table correctly. While the pupils put the finishing touches to the dining room, Heather starts with the pudding. I'm making banana bread. This is one way of getting seven pounds of bananas into the children without them even realising they're eating it. It's nearly. It's about nine pounds of fruit in the four banana bread. The reason I'm cooking this first thing is because the smell of it is really, really nice. It's got a lovely aroma and everybody goes, oh, banana bread, what are you cooking? I open the door to find out. So it's a real good way of getting the children hungry for the lunch. Since doing her training, has Heather worried about trying new dishes? No, because that's the only way you learn, isn't it? If you, if you don't, don't experiment, you'll never learn. Heather's been keen to get general assistant Karen trying new dishes as well. I said to Karen, I'm sure she was capable of doing it, but she felt hesitant. So we just gradually started by doing some of the simpler things and worked our way up. And now she can cook virtually everything. Normally I do the fruit and veg and stuff like that, but what we have done for a while is swap roles. So I've actually been doing Heather's job and Heather's been doing mine so I can sort of learn the cook side of it. With continuous training, but you can ask questions and then be told something that you, don't, you didn't know before. Well, it was actually Heather's idea because when she's at college, sometimes you can't always guarantee you'll get staff to replace them. So what she did was train me so that I could actually step into her shoes when she wasn't here. Coupled with the school's award-winning whole school approach to improving meals, training is encouraging other staff to broaden their roles. My mother works in the same school. She's a dinner supervisor. She also has a number of other duties. She works with the children growing things. She helps with the vegetable garden. She helps with the fresh fruit of the morning, which has to be distributed round to classes. Some of the children uh, in the district, they sort of never think of a vegetable as a vegetable that's grown. It's just given to them on a plate. You see them growing the little seeds on the window ledge. And I thought, well, what about if we then took them outside, planted them up, the children could see what came from that seed. And then you see this bean. Now, what do you do with this bean? You slice it up and you cook it and you have it on your, your plate with your meal. Talking of the meal, the clock is ticking, but Heather's lunch is well underway. With the roast potatoes in, it's time to carve the turkey. It's something they covered at college. You're supposed to start from the far side and work your way towards you. We cooked a joint and they showed us how to cook correctly. 
We've got a section on the college course that's all about knives and the joints and what the meat actually is for rather than just you could like sort of buy stewing steak and expect to get a roast out of it, you know what I mean? <laughs> At the worst scenario. Does she think the pupils will like what she's prepared? They love a cooked dinner. They really do love a cooked dinner. You'll see that today. It's service time. The parents have arrived, along with younger brothers and sisters. Do they think the school food's improved? Before, it's all chocolate cakes, isn't it, and chips. There's not really much of that anymore, so it's improved a lot. I mean, they love their food. Don't you, Emily? It's better than what it was like when I was at school, actually, because the uh, potato used to have black eyes in and everything oh, when I was dang. at school, so it's changed a lot. <laughs> Healthier drinks are also on the menu. I'm making strawberry and banana smoothie. It's fresh bananas with strawberries and crackers. Mm. 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 With service underway, Heather has a chance to talk to the parents. They're surprised that the school has a salad cart and that their children readily eat from it. Kyle, I was going to eat the whole lot of you. Can you come back to I think there's something there that appeals to everybody. So if you don't like one thing, they still eat plenty of another. They do. They usually clear the, cart, the salad cart every day. It just goes. It's good for the parents to see what their children are now eating. And with old school dinners, you know straight away, it'd go for chips, it'd go for sausage and that. But no. actually seeing all that, no. you've actually got so much on offer. Yeah. Heather credits ongoing training for helping her to improve and maintain the quality of the school's food. We still need to know how to cook it correctly uh, to give them a really balanced nutritional meal. And that's where the MVQ and any training comes into its own, really. And do you get updated training all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nearly every holiday. And it's good because Birmingham, I think, are really trying very hard at uh, the forefront of training all their staff. We can write as many healthy menus as you can shake a stick at, but if the children don't know what they're eating, if the ladies don't know why they're serving it, if the skills are not there, then you know we haven't got that whole school approach. Primrose Hill's efforts to provide this and Heather's training have not gone unnoticed. We went to an award ceremony in November, which we thought we would just sort of making the numbers up really <laughs> and to our surprise we won uh, an award for menu development and then also we won the overall winner and that included pubs, hotels, restaurants so we were quite pleased with that. Heather's training has affected not only her but her staff and pupils also. What's Heather's advice to other school caterers when it comes to improving school meals? Persevere, and if you feel you can't do the job, let somebody hire up now, and there's always help and training there for you.